Welcome back to Server Basics, the video series where we cover a lot of uh, basic terminology, basic setup and configuration, and basic uh, other stuff <laughs> when it comes to Windows Server 2008 R2 um, in a domain, domain environment. This video we're going to be talking about DFS, Distributed File System. We're going to jump right into um, basically what we're trying to accomplish here, and uh, I'll give you a, an example of what we we have. I kind of pre-set up some things here, so make make this a little quicker. Let's say we have three different servers, which we do here. This one we have STDC-1, and I'm just viewing the non-hidden shares on that server. Same thing here, ST Server-1. You can see I created this awesome share right there. We're going to be working with that one. And then also ST Dev-1. This is a virtual machine on this on this computer, but uh, and I created a super awesome share right here. And we'll be working with shares from each one of these servers um, and including them in our DFS namespace. Now what the purpose of DFS is, or at least um, one of the purposes and like the main thing, the main reason I use it and probably the main re reason we use it at where I work now and um, some previous places is to try to simplify folder sharing or uh, network shares uh, to make to make it easier to find them or to make it easier for scripts to you know map the drives or whatever what, for whatever reason um, this this whole DFS thing makes life a lot easier when you have network shares spanned across different uh, servers also it makes it nice if you have let's say you have a a DC sitting in a remote office which handles all the authentication and, and folder sharing and whatnot over in this remote office and then you have one here and you're you you want to sync up a that share that network share on both servers uh, so like maybe like you have a deployment uh, folder that's shared out so whenever users log in if they're if they need uh, you know uh, office 2003 or whatever installed and that gets installed through group policy. Let's say um, when they log in, it want, needs to install that. Instead of having to pull files from the deployment folder in the remote o or the home office, you can sync up those two folders, the remote office and the home office, to have the same network shares, to have the same contents in that folder. So that way they can just pull everything right there locally and it's a lot quicker. All right, enough rambling on. I have already set this up here, but I tried to remove it so I can uh, put this video together. And uh, it wanted me to remove the Active Directory role, which I wasn't gonna do. So um, I did remove it from one of the other servers, so we'll do a, a, an install of that role on another server. Uh, basically, and that's, here's a quick thing too. You don't have to have DFS installed on all your servers. Only the servers that you want to replicate those folders that we just talked about. So in most cases, you may not even need to do that. But um, as you can see here, under file services, and I have server manager up on each server, this server right here corresponds to this folder. Um, this server here corresponds to this folder. And then same thing with this. Um, you know, what, Let me close that as well. STDEV. Same thing with this server here, stdev corresponds with this one. So it's basically I'm just showing you the f shared folders on each server. Um, now, once you install DFS, which, you know what, let's just go, go ahead and kick off a quick install, close that one out. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and um, we need to add a service to this. Let's see, oops. Add role services. So since we already have the file services or the, the share and storage management role installed. We're gonna add services to this file services management, which here's our DFS namespace. And here's where you can go ahead and install the DFS replication as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that, but again, you don't have to do that. This is just to, um, I'm gonna create a namespace later. This is just to get it installed on this one. Um, so, I mean, here, let me go back here. You could create a namespace now, but I wanna show you from the, from the standpoint where you want to create a new namespace so let's just hit next and I'll talk about it later 
I'm going to fast forward real quick. All right, that only took a minute or so. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close this. Now, if we expand file services, and this, let's see, we do have a DFS management here. Same thing is here. Okay, so let's let's set this up, and it, it'll start to make sense once I once we have it set up and I show you what it does. So, if you right click on the DFS management and you click on new namespace, basically what we're going to be doing is enter the name of the server that will host the namespace. So this one, which is my main DC um, in my environment, this isn't a test one or a lab one. This is the the one I use in production here at home. Um, this one uh, is called stdc-1 or you can browse actually let's browse to it all right next okay enter a name for the namespace now this is where okay what we want to do is we want to have a path so you're basically creating a UNC path that will combine all these network shares so you're going to be putting in your domain name which is south town which is what my domain name is backslash and then Whatever you're gonna, whatever you're gonna put in this box up here is what you're gonna use here. And I like to keep it short and simple and sweet and to the point. So I'm gonna just name it DFS. Okay. So when I come down here, I'm just gonna go Southtown slash DFS, and it's gonna list all my network shares. Okay. So we'll just go ahead and do that. If necessary, there was a recall. Okay. We don't need to create. I don't. I don't care about editing those settings. This is a domain-based namespace. You could do a standalone one, um, you know, if if it's not on a DC. I mean, if if your if your server is not actually part of a domain, which would be kind of weird, I think. But I don't know. I don't know where you would use that. But all right. So this one, I'm going to go ahead and enable Windows Server 2008 mode because this whole Active Directory uh, schema is on Windows Server 2008 R2. Um, we're going to go ahead and hit next and just yeah you want to confirm all that so right now it's creating the namespace okay actually i didn't need to pause it it was done so we're going to go ahead and close this out let's go ahead and expand this take a look at what we got here so now we have under namespaces you can see we have a new namespace we don't have any folders or anything yet under here and replication we're not concerned with yet so don't worry about all that right now um, what we need to do is we need to add folders to this namespace what we want to share is let's share let's add users from stdc-1 to this so we're going to name this users and um, folder targets is going to be stdc-1 slash users and we know that's a sh that's a shared folder because we see it in in here it's stdc-1 slash fold slash users so hit ok and hit ok Okay, now we have one. And I'm going to show you what that just did. So now we can go to Southtown backslash DFS. This is our DFS working right here. And we have one folder called users. You can see it's got like a shortcut. It's basically like an alias or a pointer to that. And I believe if you go to here, you can go to DFS and you can actually see where it's pointing to, which is really neat. So if you double click on that, you can see the folders that's in there. So let's keep going, shall we? Let's minimize that. We're going to add another folder to this. This time from ST server, which we're going to we're going to do awesome share. Let's put in there awesome share. And you can name this whatever. Let's do um, a share. There we go. Just to show you what what you can do. This is going to be ST server dash one backslash awesome share and again you can browse to it so you make sure you get the right path and everything but hopefully I typed that right all right so let's see what that just did to this folder and you can see it automatically updated now we have another folder called a share if we go in there if there was contents in there you would see it okay so let's go back let's do another one let's go to do, 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 right click new folder this time, let's take one from ST Dev. We're going to do super awesome share. So we're going to do we'll just call this one super awesomeness share, yo. Okay, and this time let's browse to it. Uh, we want to switch servers. We're going to go to ST uh, Dev one. 
Oops, I guess I could have just typed it here. It's searching for all the shared folders on that server, which remember are these, and it does show this one here. So we're gonna go ahead and hit okay, and okay. There we go. So now if we go back to our DFS folder, we have a super awesome to share, yo. Go in there and you can access. So again, you can right click in this folder, in this DFS folder, go to DFS. It shows you the namespace, like the server that's holding the namespace, which is STDC-1, uh, if you need to know that. Uh, again, if you wanna see where this one's at, right click it, go to DFS, and you can see, hey, it's on STDEV-1 slash super awesome share so this is kind of like the main reason I use it and the main reason we use it at you know where I work we also use it for replicating because we have a lot of remote clinics and each remote clinic has a DC and we replicate a certain folder uh, between the home office and all these remote locations that way those DCs have the same exact contents in those shared folders or this one specific share folder as we do here at our home office that way um, you know if we add a deployment or we add something to that folder it will be replicated across now to do that and the reason we do that or I just kind of explain the reason but um, I'm trying to figure out the best way to explain this I have right now I have these two folders on this particular server Chris and Shannon me and my wife what these contain are files that are scanned in uh, from our scanner, our big copier scanner. Now, I, I set up, if we look here at the network shares on my main DC, I also have a Chris and a Shannon, but they're empty. If you look in these, they're empty. I just created these and shared them off. Nothing real hard. But let's say we want to replicate, or we want to sync up these folders with these. Well, we can do that with DFS. And the way we're going to do that is let's go over here to our main DC. Let's, uh, let's add a new folder. We're going to call this uh, Shannon. And we're going to add... This one's going to be... STDC-1. Hit OK. We just added Shannon's, but this one's from the STDC-1, which doesn't have any contents in it. Now we're gonna add an, I think we can go in here and add a replication. So what I'm gonna do is add a folder target and go ST server-1 backslash Shannon. A replication group can be used to keep these folder targets synchronized. Do you want to create the replication group? It's going to end up right here. We're going to hit yes. And it's creating this replication group, which is basically going to be like a manager that manages, hey, I have, uh, I have a new file over here on this side. Sync up. All right, and it's going to sync up. That way you'll have them in both locations. Now, there's really no reason to to do this with these FTP folders that I'm setting up, but I'm just showing you. So, all right, so next, it's basically showing you what two folders are gonna be replicated. Yep, we want these two replicated, and you can have multiple ones down here. Uh, primary, primary member is gonna be the one that has the contents in it, the one that, um, so that way it'll, it'll sync up. So let's do st server-1, hit next. Full mesh, you can read all that stuff, but I'm leaving it full mesh. Replicate continuously using the specified bandwidth. You can limit the bandwidth if you have a lot of stuff in there, which you don't want it to impact your network too much. We're just gonna create it real quick. Hit okay. Replication will not begin until the configuration is picked up by the members of the replication group. The amount of time it takes depends on the Active Directory domain services replication latency, as well as the point interval. Again, it's gonna replicate when it feels like it, so. Um, when I tested this out before, it was pretty quick. So let's just go check out STDC-1. Now remember, this one didn't have any files in it yet. So I'm just gonna leave this here. I'm gonna pause it and uh, we can look at the time. It's 521 and I will come back when we start seeing some 
files populate. All right. It's 526, so it didn't take too long, but uh, it decided to replicate. Now, if we look, let's go back to ST server. Remember, this is this server right here is where the actual FTP uh, shared folder is, which had all these, and this STDC-1 did not. It was just an empty folder. So now they're synced up. If we were to go to our DFS, which I must have closed, so Southtown DFS, go into Shannon's folder, you're only going to see one one fol or one set of files, of course. If I, I mean, that's kind of common sense, I guess. But, um, but if I were to remove a folder in here, it would actually remove it from here once it syncs up, which means it would only show one here, or it would remove it from here as well. So it's pretty cool. Um, there's a lot of stuff you can do with that. I just kind of scratched the surface with this. But this kind of gives you a brief overview. And you can see right here, this folder right here has a little, like, green arrow it's just main it just means that there's a replication group associated with it which is down here i highly recommend messing around with this because in an enterprise environment or not even not even just enterprise well yeah i guess if you have multiple servers multiple shares and stuff it really comes in handy you can kind of just simplify all your folder sharing and locations by just typing in your dfs namespace um, hopefully this helped out and uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video hopefully i didn't lose you too bad uh, i know i kind of ramble on and um Please comment below uh, if this helped you out or if uh, you want to see some more details about this or whatever.